All right, at the top of the page, words to remember. Interest, it, it could be the amount of money that you pay if you're borrowing money from somebody or a bank, a credit union, or the amount of money that you earn out of deposits. So if you have a, an investment account, a savings account, um, you could potentially earn some interest. Your annual interest rate is the percent of interest that you pay for the money that you either bow or borrow or that's deposited in your account. Principal. Your principal is your original or starting amount of money. That's the A in the equation. And then your balance is the sum of your principal plus the interest. How much do you have left after um, a certain time period? So remember this graph here is the compound interest or simple interest? When you see the exponential growth, the interest is being compounded. So this is compound interest versus simple interest. So simple. So simple interest is linear. Compound interest is exponential. You have to have this equation memorized for your test. Simple interest, have you ever heard the Michael Jackson song PYT? Pretty young thing? No? So <laughs> I thought it would be a way to help you remember. Simple interest formula, so I is the amount of interest earned or paid, is your principal. How much money did I start with? You multiply that by your interest rate, okay? But remember, it's as a decimal. And then times T, how much time in years? So the formula to find your balance, how much money at the end, you take how much money you put into the account or how much you borrowed, and then you add the interest. So it's P plus PRT. So let's take a look at the first uh, equation, and then we'll go back up to the compound interest formula. So with example number one, you can put yourself in the situation. Okay, or maybe you're thinking about putting money into an account that has simple interest. But Diana deposits $725, so that's her principal. The account pays 2.3% simple interest, so the rate is 2.3%. But as a decimal, 2.3 out of 100. Say that just a little louder. 0 0.023. Either divide by 100 or just move the decimal two places to the left as 100 has two zeros. And then our time is 18 months, but it's supposed to be out of years. So it's what? A year and a half. That's easy to figure out because it's a multiple of six. So you have six plus six, 12, so it's a full year, and then another six is a year and a half. But if you didn't have Okay, a nice number like a year and a half or two years, three years. Take the 18 and divide it by 12 as there's 12 months in the year. So whatever the number is, take it divided by 12 and you do get the 1.5. So our interest is P times R times T. So $725 times 0 0.023 times 1.5. And you always need to have your answer in terms of money. So that's to the nearest hundredth or cent when rounding. So how much interest? Well, when you do this calculation, you get 25.0125. So if I'm talking about money to the nearest cent, that two to the right of the one, is it going to raise it up to two cents or keep it one cent? Keep it one. So the answer is $25 and one cent is the amount of interest that she's going to earn on her account. The other formula, we're going to fill that in before we look at the back, um, is compound interest. So when the interest is compounded, that's this formula here. 
A equals 1 plus, as we're seeing growth, R divided by, that kind of looks like an N. It's R divided by N in the parentheses to the N T, N times T. So A represents, again, the amount of money at the end. P is still the principal. Rate is still your interest rate, again, as a decimal. T is still in years. And then N represents the number of times the interest is compounded. So if the interest is compounded quarterly, what is N equal? How many times a year is it going to be compounded? Four times. Monthly, I don't think we need to write that down, but monthly it would be compounded how many times? Twelve. And then semi-annually. So maybe some of your stores that you shop in have a semi-annual sale. Okay, so how many times a year would they have that sale? I think I heard it twice. So N equals 2. So quarterly, so every quarter. So think about our marking periods in terms of quarters. And then semi-annually is twice a year. So let's look at the next example. This is still simple interest, okay? As it says, you deposit $300 in a savings account that pays 4% simple interest. So it's very clear in the question. Find your account balance. So our principal, we always need to know how much money we're depositing. Our rate is 4%, which is 0 0.04. And then our T is 9 months. Again, it's always in terms of years. So 9 out of 12, because there's 9 out of 12, 12 months in a year, how many years are we talking? It reduces to common factor for both 9 and 12 is 3. And 3 fourths, you can leave it as a fraction, but it's 0.75 years, or of a year. So let's find our interest. Our interest is 300 times 0 0.04 times 0 0.75. How much money are we making on $300 in an account that pays 4% interest? So after nine months, how much money are you going to earn? What's the interest on that? What's that? $9. So the interest is $9 to find the balance you take how much money you started with and you add the $9 to get a balance of $309. So that would be how much money at the end. Go ahead and read the next two. It should be situation one and situation two. That's a typo. So in this case, um, write a compound interest function, which is the same as an equation, to model each situation. Now when you write the equation, so I'm going to change this to equation, you should have an x and a y in it. Okay? So should have an x and y. So you could type it in your calculator and you can see your table of values, which we're going to do. Now the equation for compound interest is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the N times T. T is your time. T is your X when you write the equation. Okay? How much time or Y is the final amount? So in the first one, our principal is $18,000. Our rate is 4.5%, which equals 0 0.045. It's going to be compounded annually. So what's our N? Annually means it's just going to be at the end of each year, so it's only once. And then our T, our time, is 6 years. So when I write the equation, I need an x and a y in there. 
So the equation would be our A <coughs> equals our principal 18,000 times 1 plus 0 0.045 divided by 1 to the 1 times T. We're just writing the equation, so we leave T out. We'll plug in the 6 later. So the equation is A equals 18,000 times 1.045 to the T. Or it can be Y equals 18,000, 1.045 to the X. This is what you would type into the calculator. Whether you leave it in terms of A and have the T in there or change your T to your X for the calculator, I'm okay with either equation. So let's actually type it in the calculator and look at your table of values when your time or X is 6. We can get an idea over time how it's going to change. So type in your calculator, go to y equals 18,000 parentheses I'm going to reset this calculator just because I don't know if we had changed the table settings or anything like that. So 18,000 parentheses 1.045 raised to the x graph. I'm not going to be able to see it. Does anyone know why? Because our starting amount is 18,000. But let's go to the table of values. That's all I need to see. And when x is 6, how much money are we, or it doesn't give this person a name, but how much money are they making? Yeah, but that's rounded, right? That's the nearest dollar. So I want to actually see or do the math so I can see in cents exactly what it would be. So then I go back here and I just type in 18,000, 1.045 to the 6th power. You have to do, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, you have to take 1.045 and raise it to the 6th power first. So without it being rounded in terms of cents, you get 23,440 and 68 cents. So the calculator will round, but I want it in terms of an exact value on your assessment. And then situation two, we're going to take a look at not investing as much, but we're going to put a thousand dollars in an account that is compounded quarterly. So if it's compounded quarterly, what's N? N is four. So our interest rate is 3% or 0 0.03. This is our principal. So to do the math, well first we have to write the equation. So A equals 1,000, one plus 0 0.03 over four, because it's R over N, to the four times T. We don't plug in the years until we're at the very end. What is 0 0.03 over 4? That number. So I'm going to reduce it to 1.0075 to the 4t. I'll either take this equation or the one you would get when you substitute the y in there for a and the x in there for t. So 1.0075 to the 4x. Okay, either is okay for part A. You'd want to type in the second one in the calculator, but now we're going to do the math because I'm going to plug in 5 years, which is my t. What's 4 times 5? What's that? 20. So I'm going to do part B. All I need to do is 1,000, 1, 2, 3, 1.0075 to the 20th power. Remember, you want to do that first. So raise that to the 20th power and then times $1,000 and how much money are we talking about? 
at the end of five years with 3% interest compounded four times a year is what? Here's some of the notes you want to count. So I get $1,161.18. Okay. Last one. So Harvey's invested $5,000 at 5% interest rate that's compounded quarterly. So four times a year. Okay. Part A, how much money will the investment be worth after five years? So you don't need to write the equation, but we're going to make the substitution. Let's make known our principal is $5,000. Our rate is 5%, which is 0 .05. Hmm. So we wrote, oh no, compounded quarterly. N is going to be 4. And then five years, T is five. So one or five thousand dollars, one plus the R, which is point zero five over N, which is four, to the four times five. So you can actually go right to the answer on your test, but if you get the wrong answer, I can't show you any or give you any partial credit because I can't see the work. It would be helpful if you did or at least showed me what that number is. So this is 5,000 times. When you do this math and raise it to the 20th power, or at least show me that this is 1.05 over 4 plus 1 is 1.0125 to the 20. So showing me some work between each step, raising this to the 20 power times 5,000 is what amount of money. Paige, do you have it? Did you multiply by 5,000 just yet? Kind of multiply by 5,000. <laughs> Dylan, do you have it? Yep, $6,410.19. When will the investment be worth more than $10,000? You have to go to your table of values. So if you want to see this on the calculator, so for part B, we're going to make a note to see the calculator, and we'll go there in a second. But to see it on the calculator, you want to type in this here, but again, it's going to be Y equals 5 thousand one point zero two five to the four X though you don't want to put the T in so when you're typing in the calculator you got to leave time out because the time could change it could go from five years to six years to seven years to eight years so you take out the T value that plugged in and this is when we're gonna look when for what time value so the X is the unknown so let's go to the calculator Five, one, two, three, one point zero, one, two, five, raised to the four X second table. I want it to be more than ten thousand dollars. So I'm gonna keep scrolling until I see a value for a Y, because that's your end amount. So six years, seven years, eight. 9, 10, 11, well, 12 were just above 9,000, 13, and then 14. So in what year, okay, when will the investment be worth $10,000? Now in this, can you get a clear idea if it happens in the 13th year or 14th year? No, so you can go to your second table set 
And you can have it change by a very small amount, say um, 0.25, and then go to your table, and then you keep scrolling. Now on your test, if you're within a year, I'm going to give you credit, but if you want to br really break it down, so right here, I hit the arrow button too many times. So I break it down by a quarter, and I can still see that through a 13.75, it's at the 19 or 99.01. Now quarter is what I just go second table set. Didn't I just break down the year into quarters? And this is being compounded quarterly, right? So did it happen to go over? $10,000 in this fourth quarter? Did it happen to go over? Or does it wait till that 14th year? I think it happens to happen between the 13.7514. Well, how do I see between that? So let's see if it does happen in that fourth quarter. And again, I don't really expect you guys to break this down as much, okay? If I change that 0.25, so Holly thinks it's going to happen in that last quarter. So let's break it down to, I'm going to change that 0.25 to 0 0.05, and let's see if Holly is right. So table, and I'm going to keep scrolling. I'm at 13.55. Do we see the Y value go above $10,000? She's right. 13.95. It reaches that ten thousand dollars and is going to go. Now it says more than it is going to go above within that fourth quarter of the thirteenth year. But if you said fourteenth, I would still give you credit. So the answer here, you just want to copy some values down from your table, and we're going to say the thirteenth year. So I'm going to copy down at thirteen. It was 9,539.2, and this in the 14th, it was, I'm just going to copy down a couple of table values so that when you're um, grading it, I can see that you have the right equation that you typed in, okay? Last part, part C. What if Harvey could invest the same amount of money in an account that paid 5% interest, so instead of it compounded four times? So you're going to make more money the more times it's compounded, right? Because it's interest, you're earning interest on interest. What happens if it's compounded monthly? So I'm running out of room here. I'm going to do part C here. We're still using um, the same amount of money. So it's still $5,000. One plus, it's still 5% interest rate. So 0 0.05 over 12 this time and then 12 times 5, which is going to be raised to the 60th power, right? So let's do the math. Type this in. And what do we get for an overall amount? So 0 0.05 divided by 12. Okay, you want to keep everything in the calculator, don't round. And then add the 1. Now take that and raise it to the 60th power. Then times your 5,000. So we're looking at $6,416.79. But the question asks, how much more in his investment would he make if it was compounded monthly than quarterly. So I have to subtract what? So this answer here is um, $6,416.79. But how much more is it going to be worth than quarterly? I have to subtract this from that to see how much more money he would make. So minus $6,410.19 is he makes only $6.60 more, but over time, after six years, he's going to make even more money. After seven years, that mo a money that he, um, and then interest, he's going to make even more.